this video demonstration we are going to explore the voxel painting tool set in 3D Coat. Now the term voxel painting is a bit of a misnomer in this particular case because although you are working on a voxel object within 3D Coat, the actual painting is going to be on the surface mesh. And what I mean by that is the voxels in 3D Coat are just an internal calculation using the Martian Cubes algorithm and it is displayed using an outer mesh okay, that conforms to whatever modifications you make to the volume. So you can see here that there is some dynamic tessellation in certain areas and that is using a live clay tool set which allows you to do that. Very similar uh, in some regards as uh, PTEX because PTEX will allow you to paint areas that you want uh, greater levels of resolution as well. When you switch to the paint room, by default, under view, show voxels in paint room will be enabled. But if you don't want that, okay, make sure to uncheck this. Okay. So I'll turn that back on. Now the first question is, what is up with this dude's gray hair? What did I do to him? Okay. Well, it just in, in my own uh, personal experience, this pick matte gray is the, the only one for just general purpose that allows you to get a full range of color. Let's go ahead and get started in the paint room. And uh, as you can see, I've already done some texture work here on this little guy. And uh, what I want to do at this stage is go ahead and hide the head and work on the hair. Okay, so on this particular layer, what you can do, you can obviously use a, a paintbrush, okay, and uh, choose whether you want to apply color and specular. Oh, and I do need to mention that the depth channel does not work with voxel uh, or vertex painting. All right, but you can uh, store color and specularity information. Okay, so without further ado, again, you can uh, let me adjust the color. And you can paint if you'd like. In this case, why not just uh, make sure un ignore back faces is on because we want to go all the way through and check. Uh, maybe a selection mode. In, any one of these will work, but let's say, let's use a rectangle. Okay. Just drag and select. Okay, and so uh, there we have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and before I forget, uncheck specularity channel. I don't need that anymore. Okay, once I've done it, that's that's enough. So uh, now that I have that, let's temporarily hide that layer. We'll create a new one. We're going to somewhat fake ambient occlusion by using the cavity map. Let me choose a darker, darker color here. All right, and now what I want to do is more in cavity, okay, and the next thing is adjust the cavity scale. Now, in this bigger case, uh, you have to do some trial and error, but I find that uh, a larger number helps best. Okay, so I can, again, I can use a brush to do this. Okay, if you want kind of a custom look, or you can just do it very quickly if you're trying to save time, and obviously that's the name of the game no matter what you do. So let's, again, let's go ahead and rectangular select and let 3D Coat do all this for us. <clears throat> okay. Now the next thing we may want to do is do the opposite, actually, to, to create some highlights. So I'll create another layer and this time unhide that base okay and this time instead of in the cavity I want it to be just the opposite so less in cavity same scale and drag select okay so we have that we can now make some additional adjustments I'm going to create a, a new layer and I'm turning that ambient occlusion layer or that cavity map layer, I'm turning that off temporarily. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and use a paintbrush, this time with really light strokes, okay? Very sharp. So I'm just going to make some custom strokes here. And, uh, and this time I don't need cavity painting. I just just a regular mode here. And I probably want to bring my opacity down quite a bit. And if I raise my brush size, you can probably see how that would affect big, you know, large swaths. I don't want to do that in this case. I'm just I just kind of want to uh, create some accents here. And I may bring the opacity up a little bit more. And just kind of drag along these large clumps so that they're accented more. Just kind of want to break it up a bit. And bring my brush size down. Finish this up quickly. Okay, so um, once I'm relatively satisfied with with the result, can come back. And simply uh, change the blending mode. Okay, to maybe a color dodge and bring the amount down to 70% maybe. Okay, skipping forward just a bit after uh, tweaking some of the opacity levels and uh, the blending modes of the different layers. Now let's talk about the exporting of the object. What you would do is go into the voxel sculpting room and uh, select your object, export via FBX. And in uh, your external application, when you import it in, when you configure your viewports, you should have an option to enable vertex color. Also, in your materials, uh, whether it's color or specularity, you can apply a vertex color map in those particular uh, channels. Okay, and it should render out just fine. So what I'm doing here is I'm hiding some of the other elements, such as the teeth and the eyes and such. And we're going to pop on over into the render room to see how it uh, would look if we rendered from inside a 3D coat or uh, just a glimpse of what it might look like in an external application. Okay, you turn the interactive renderer on and off or render straight out. All right, so that should conclude Voxel Painting in 3D coat. Thank you for watching.